welcome to our third module in this little series about how to play golf croquet. In this module we're going to be looking at some more aspects of tactical play, the offside rules and also the rules about wrong ball incidents. When you're approaching a hoop to run it there is what you might call a triangle of success and I've marked it out with the, the string line here and it's roughly 20 to 30 degrees either side of the hoop. And a ball anywhere in this area between the two lines of string has a pretty good chance of either running or at least getting into the hoop. And this is hoop one and one of the things that you need to practice is how to get your first ball into essentially this trapezoidal area here which I've marked out with bisque sticks. So a ball which comes across from corner four and ends up in this trapezoidal area has a pretty good chance of running the hoop. So and if it's the first ball, if it's the blue ball, it really puts pressure on the opponent because the opponent knows that unless he or she gets rid of that blue ball you're going to score the hoop. And one of the things you've got to bear in mind in golf croquet is that every shot counts, every hoop counts and it's about, as we said in previous modules, it's about putting pressure on the opponent and the more pressure you can put on the opponent by simply getting your ball in the right places means that they're going to have to attack you and in that way you can come back and um, get your ball back in order to run through the hoop. A little practice routine that you can do on your own uh, for, for getting back into this um, trapezoid of power is to put in some bisque sticks as I've had here with the, as the um, string lines were about 30 degrees from the hoop. Just hit a ball away anywhere on the lawn to a random place, anywhere you like and then practice putting it back from wherever it stops into this trapezoid of power. If you can do that consistently, you will immensely improve the pressure that you're putting on the opponent and of course your chances of winning the game. If you don't manage to hit the uh, trapezoid here, it's best to overshoot and end up on this side at hoop one rather than end up short. Because if an opponent ball does manage to get into the, uh, where it, where the power position, you've got a chance then of hitting it away right across the lawn. Whereas if you were on this side and undershooting, you could only move it seven yards to the boundary, which is a relatively easy shot to get back into the uh, power position here in front of the hoop. So if anything, at hoop one, try and overshoot rather than undershoot, but best of all, get inside the trapezoid here. So we now come to talk about offside situations. When a ball runs a hoop, any ball that is more than halfway towards the next hoop in order is said to be offside, except in certain situations that we'll come to in a few moments. But generally speaking, if a ball lies between the uh, halfway line and the next hoop, it is offside and the opponent of that ball has the choice of moving it either to a penalty point or leaving it where it lies. So here we are at hoop one. Uh, my opponent's ball, and she is playing black and blue, is nicely placed for hoop one. Uh, one of my balls, the red, is on the boundary and the other two balls are up towards hoop two. My opponent's other ball, the blue, is uh, roughly halfway between the halfway line and hoop two. And my other ball, the yellow, is just on the right side of the halfway line uh, towards hoop one. There is no actual physical halfway line. It's marked out by the fact that the peg, of course, is halfway 
between hoops one and two and three and four and five and six for that matter. On the boundary there should be little markers either painted or little white sticks to show the halfway mark down the boundary. There's one corresponding at the other side so that you can sight along them and see whether a ball such as this one, my yellow ball, is the wrong side of the boundary or the right side of the boundary. And the rule is that all of a ball has to be over the boundary line for it to be uh, offside. Not half the ball, but all of the ball has to be uh, over the boundary line. And in this case, my yellow ball will be just, but only just, onside. So here we have a situation where my opponent's ball, the black, is in front of the hoop, my red ball is on the boundary, and I'm going to try and clear the black by hitting it away. So I missed with my clearance shot, and so now it's Black's turn to play. There we go. So Black has run the hoop. What happens to the balls further towards hoop two? Once the black ball had run hoop one, there are two offside balls. My opponent's ball, the blue, and I'm going to ask her to put this at a, uh, a penalty point and we'll put it at this one over here. The other offside ball, of course, is my own red, which is over there on the north boundary. But where would you like it put, Barbara? I thought you might say that. So, my opponent has sent my red ball over to the opposite side of the lawn, which is a very sensible thing to do. In most situations, but sometimes you can strike lucky. My yellow ball here is halfway down the lawn, just on side as we discovered. Black came through hoop one. It's now yellow's turn to shoot and yellow might have a little pot at hoop two. Yes. So, by a piece of good fortune, or good play, uh, my yellow ball ran through hoop two, but my red ball is relatively advantageous because it's on the right side of the lawn to get towards hoop three um, than it might have been had it been over here at the other penalty point. Can my opponent say, oh Ian, I want you back over here on this side of the lawn. No, she can't. Once a ball has been directed to a penalty point, that is the penalty point that it has to use. And it's just rotten luck if somebody puts their ball through the hoop and then it ends up closer to the hoop, that, the, the next hoop, than you'd really intended. So now the play carries on in order. Um, with, uh, with blue and yellow, uh, red and so on. As well as the halfway line that we've already seen which goes across the lawn from the one penalty point to the other, there are two other halfway lines which extend the length of the lawn halfway between the centre uh, hoops, hoops five and six, and on the one side hoops three and four, and on the other side hoops one and two. Another form of legal offside is where you can play off an opponent ball in order to put yourself into a, a better position for the next hoop. Here we have a situation where we're at hoop four, blue is nicely placed in front of the hoop, my yellow ball is shielded from blue by the black so I would be struggling to hit the blue but I can get myself into a reasonable position on hoop five by just clipping the black and sliding across toward hoop five but allowing blue to run hoop four. So here is yellow, fairly close to hoop five, well over the halfway line and it would be offside um, had it not been put 
there by black when blue has run that hoop. Another situation where a ball can be legally, off, legally offside, such as the yellow is here, is if my opponent had made uh, a, a striking or a non-striking fault and, that, and put that ball there and I had opted to leave it there rather than take it back to the position before the fault. But that's a relatively unusual situation. And the other example of where uh, a ball can be legally offside is if an opponent puts it there uh, themselves. So here we have a situation, it's Blue's turn to play, yellow is straight in front of the hoop and blue is going to clear yellow. So my opponent um, hit away my yellow onto the south boundary, uh, more or less opposite hoop five. So it is at the moment, or, or it would be offside, um, unless I can run hoop four with the red. So because my opponent put yellow over there, it is not offside. Had I hit it over there trying to do a clearance and missed, as I did uh, with the first ball from hoop one, then it would be offside. The rules for wrong ball play are set out in the rules book and they are rule 11. There is in fact a diagram in the centre of the book, which will be coming up on your screen shortly, which sets out the basic premises of what happens if someone plays a wrong ball. And there are really three scenarios which I call OPC. OPC. Oops, penalty, condone. OPC. Oops, penalty, condone. And the first of those, oops, is when someone makes a mistake and you simply put the balls back and play again. Penalty is when someone makes a mistake for which there is a formal penalty, such as losing a turn. And condone is when the opponent plays after a wrong ball has been played and in doing so condones the mistake that's been made and you just carry on regardless. Let's have a look at one of the oopses. Here we have a situation where blue has come through hoop five and red and yellow are close together by the peg and in a position where red can promote yellow up to hoop six. Of course, it's red is the next to play. opponent sees the yellow ball moving and automatically thinks, ah, it's Blue's next turn. And of course, the opponent, my opponent Barbara, should have played black, not blue. And in that situation, where she played her own ball in error, it simply goes back to where it would have been and she plays black instead. Another oops situation can occur right at the beginning of a game, particularly when people are playing with secondary colours and perhaps they're not used to playing with secondary colours and if the peg in the centre of the lawn only has the primary colours on it as this one does. And so if you're not used to playing with secondaries it's quite easy to make an error and play balls in the wrong order as we'll see in a moment. My opponent Barbara is going to begin by playing the green ball as she should. Barbara 
I think I've played a wrong ball. I could have played pink second instead of white. What happens now? What, what happens now is that we bring back the balls that were played in error, in other words, the white and the brown, and we simply play them again in the correct order. And if you think that's a bit hard on the person who played the brown ball correctly, well, the oops situations are the only ones where it's legitimate for the opponent to stop play, as it says in the book, to forestall play. If you notice in an oops situation that, uh, that the, your opponent is going to play a wrong ball, you should stop them. Uh, in this case, uh, Barbara was as dozy as I was and didn't notice that I was playing the wrong ball. So we now go back and play the correct ball, which of course is pink. And then the game carries on as usual. The third oops situation can arise in doubles where partners accidentally swap balls. Uh, this is particularly likely to happen if you are in a double banked games and for some reason you have to stop and wait for the other game to perhaps come through a hoop or uh, something like that and you slightly lose track of who is playing which ball. So just watch what happens here. Barbara has played the green. Um, Charmian, is, who is our doubles opponent, is going to play pink. Now we have a little intermission because somebody else has come along and disturbed the game with double banking. So, when we get round to playing again, perhaps in two or three minutes, we start again. And guess what? Barbara accidentally played the brown ball, which was my ball, and I should have stopped her and forgot about it. So in that situation, all the balls that have moved, which was in this case the brown and the pink go back to the places where they were before the shot was taken and I play my ball. So I put the balls back to where they were before Barbara played the shot in error. The pink is back on the spot that it was on. The brown is on the spot that it was on. And I simply play my shot in the normal way. So we now come to the peas. The the penalty uh, wrong ball situations. And the first of these that we're going to look at is in a singles game. I'm playing Barbara and she is green and brown. I'm pink and white. Uh, Barbara's going to play. And for some unaccountable reason, I lose track of the fact that I'm playing pink and white and I think I'm playing green and brown and I play the brown ball which of course is Barbara's ball Oh, sorry Barbara that wasn't my ball What happens now? First of all, I scored a hoop with my brown ball that hoop does not count Secondly, after a wrong ball shot the opponent has the option of putting the balls back to where they were before the shot in error was committed or leaving them where they stand after the wrong ball has been played. For the purposes of these examples, we're going to assume that the opponent puts the balls back to where they were. The ball goes back to where it started. Barbara can restart playing either her green ball or her brown ball and then we follow on in sequence. From this situation, she'd probably have a go with the green.
which is a pretty good penalty for being stupid. In the double situation, it's basically exactly the same. Barbara's going to play her green ball again. Let's see what happens, Barbara. And I somehow have the impression that instead of playing with my partner playing pink and white, I'm playing with Barbara and I'm going to I play the, green, the brown ball. And having very nicely put my partner's ball through the hoop, I suddenly realised that Barbara isn't my partner at all, it's someone else. And so what happens now? Well, the balls come back to where they were and um, I lose my turn and Barbara or her, or her partner can play with either of their balls. And having put her green very nicely into the hoop, I which one, wonder which shot one she's going to play with. So here we are. The balls are back where they were. Barbara, it's your turn to play again. You can play either of your balls. Another penalty wrong ball is where a side, um, and a side of course can be one or two people, singles or doubles, where a side continues to play after a wrong ball has been played. So let's just go back to the situation that we had before. Barbara's put her green ball into the hoop. Um, I am going to play the brown ball erroneously. Now my partner is going to play her ball, which is of course after the brown, is the white. Then we realise that we've made a mistake. What happens now? Well, it's exactly the same as the previous situation. The balls come back to where they were before the mistake was made. In other words, the green comes back into the hoop, the brown and the white come back to over here, and then it's my opponent's uh, turn to play, and as before, they can play either ball, either the, the green that was in the hoop or the brown over here. So we come to the third of the uh, wrong ball situations, the C, which is condoned. This can happen where someone plays a wrong ball, but the opponent doesn't notice, carries on playing with the correct balls, and eventually it is noticed, but you carry on playing as if the balls um, had been played in the correct order. So Bob is going to play her green ball. Because my white is quite handy for this hoop, I'm going to have a go at jumping that. Oh, Barbara, I've just realised that I've played a wrong ball, but you've played your own ball. So the game carries on now, and Barbara's hoop counts. My pink ball, which is way over behind hoop two, because we're now going for a hoop six, she can send to a penalty point. Which penalty point would you like me to send it to? Over there. And there, in fact, is an example of one of the things that one should do as a matter of etiquette. The rules say that it's up to the opponent to decide where, uh, to, 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 to say that uh, a ball is offside and then to decide where it should go, either to stay where it is or to put it at a penalty point. But these days, it is accepted that if a ball is offside, the owner of that ball, in other words me, should say to my opponent, my, in this case, pink is offside, where would you like it? So that's the end of our third module, and I hope you enjoyed watching it. Um, do remember to do some practice and uh, get out on the lawn and have a go at things like uh, putting your ball in the 
triangle of success. Every hoop has a triangle of success and it's far better to get into that triangle and be in a hoop running position than try speculative shots but put your ball behind the hoop and take pressure off the opponent. In the next uh, module we're going to be looking at some non-striking faults, some etiquette examples, when to call a referee and some more tactics. But for now, thank you for watching.